we're going to build an arch top acoustic guitar based on this book making an arch top guitar by robert benedetto i've had this book for a little while now and i use it quite a bit in the shop for guidance on guitar building and i built this my first test build based on the book was this mini arch top here's a link to the video on this one <laughs> He's not going to play every five minutes and the book comes with plans so in the back you rip out the plans I already ripped them out for your convenience there's a contour map of the top and back so it's a guide for how to carve the top and back and it came with a full-size template for bracing, which is going to be real helpful. So you print the guitar profile and blow it up 250%, and then you make a, it gets eight sheets of paper off the printer, and then you tape them together. Now you have a full size plan for your guitar. I trace that onto drafting paper. I trace that onto a piece of pine that I got from mom's garage. It was a, like a one by 10 or one by 12. And I cut it in half and then glued the two halves together. So it's not book matched, but it's it's almost quarter sawn. It'll be close. It'll I can get this carved into a dome shape. Since I, I've already practiced on one, but now, the neck is uh, pine from a shipping pallet, veneer stringers to hold it all together. We'll put a truss rod in it and we'll do a dovetail joint and we'll make a full size guitar. And this will have a little more mid range and a little more sustain. And that's my hope. Uh, we'll go week to week on these videos. This is a different style of video for me. I'm going to go week to week for as many weeks as I can. I mean, for as many weeks until it's done and then we'll play it. So let's check it out. So this week is getting the body mold started and the top and back plate started and the neck started. And I got the plans blown up and taped together. Quick message about using the table saw. This thing is a powerful and dangerous tool. I've been using it since I was very young and I learned from some master carpenters safety tips. So I'm not, this is not a table saw lesson. This is just a warning that take your safety precautions and I don't listen, you know, I don't listen to like podcasts and stuff while I'm working on power tools. You've got to be totally focused and be in the moment and do one thing at a time. For my arch top reclaimed lumber build, I'm going to cut some pieces for uh, for the neck off of an old pallet. This old shelf, ugh, this old shelf from my mom's garage. Got a couple of shelves from mom's garage. That'll be the guitar sides. And this will be the top. I'm going to do a carved top. I got two. I got two of these, and we'll do the edge and glue them together, and then carve the top and the back. So I'm just do a little bit of cutting on the table saw because when you get it out, I don't have a dust collection system, so I do everything outside. But just be careful and uh, watch lots of videos on power tool safety and get books on the subject. I, I just love getting books from the library on uh, power tools and I read all about it. Extra, read all about it. I always wait till the blade stops spinning before pulling it out. And now I've got some two dulcimer sides that are nice and 
nice and even. And then I'll cut some stock for my uh, reclaimed arch top guitar build. Reclaimed wood, arch top guitar build. All right, for the arch top reclaimed wood build, here's the shelf for the top and the sides. Oh no, this is for the top and the back. I'm actually gonna cut pretty much in half and then glue the halves together. And then I will uh, have two plates for the top and back and then I gotta carve them into the arch top. Got some pallet wood for the neck here. You know, the neck shape, you just cut out the neck profile on the three pieces and then we laminate them together and I'll put a little uh, walnut veneer in between. So I've got some stringers, which give it a cool design and also a little more strength. And I've got another part of mom's shelf for the sides. Uh, this one may be a little thin, so I've got to plane these down to be the right thickness. And I'm going to go for my piece of rosewood that I got at the hardwood store. It's been a couple years, so it's good and dry now. And I'll cut it an eighth inch thick for my fingerboard. So this is not reclaimed lumber, but it's lumber that I bought a couple years ago. And you had to wait for it to dry, so now we can use it. Finishing up my cutting for the arch top build. I've got my rosewood fingerboard. So this is gonna be 20 inches long. It'll be a little over how, how long I need it, but there's the fretboard. I just chopped that off. I already cut it to quarter inch on the table saw. using mom's garage shelves pieces of the pine and then I've got some of this rosewood to for little stringers so I'll get all this glued together and then I'll be able to carve the back out of that and then for the top more garage shelf We'll glue those together and then we'll trace the guitar body and uh, start carving the top. The neck is boards from a pallet and we'll, we'll get these planes smooth. Uh, I'll put a veneer in between and then glue them together and then we'll, we'll cut out the neck profile out of that. Yeah, I like how this fretboard actually has a little bit of the blonde color going halfway up. So that'll be kind of fun. And the sides for the arch top. More garage shelf. We'll get these planed down to a good thickness. And then we got to build our form for the body. I don't have a proper form for it. So I kind of went out actually i got all this stuff cut up before i built my form but this is just the rough cuts then we have lots of scrap left over we can use for kerf lining and bracing and i have some other scrap for my end blocks my tail block and my neck block and maybe uh I don't know if I'll have enough cutoff for the ears of the neck. Like some of that rosewood would be good. We'll see. I'm 
gluing up the, the laminate for the neck. And I got these walnut veneers that I've put in between for a little stringer and a little strength. Okay, let it dry, and then we'll cut it out on the bandsaw. Then we'll get those side or the backs, the back and the top or the arch top build. I don't want to glue it to my work board. So this should work. Now we let this dry overnight, got some good squeeze out, and I believe I have enough clamps left to do the top. I got this. The sides, they're not book matched, but it's a tight fit, and I'll get a little piece of wax paper, and I've got my clamps, you kind of get them <laughs> These furniture clamps they should be just plenty long enough. Yeah, they're plenty long enough. You get them close to the size you want. I'm gonna have the crank inside on this side. This big Irwin clamp. There we go. Oh, I do have another one. Get the middle parts. stay flush we're gonna be carving that into a arch anyway my favorite part of the morning is taking the clamps off of the pieces that were glued up the night before uh, it's instrument body form day I'm gonna cut out some plywood, laminate them together so I can make the body form for my arch top. And I have some other pieces. I'm gonna make forms for the mandolins I'm gonna be building. And that's it, body form day. So be sure to use safety gear, goggles, ear protection when you're using power tools. Uh, power tools are no joke. You know, you gotta be careful when I was out of high school, I worked on a construction crew. My drummer's dad owned a construction company and he showed me the cutoff saw, you know, a big radial arm saw. 
And I had used them before. My stepdad had one. So I knew how to use saws. And I, and when he was showing me, he took a piece of wood and turned it on and threw a chunk into the saw and it like exploded. And he says, man, you can't play bass with a stump. So I'm gonna build instruments. I wanna play them later. So be super careful. Don't listen to podcasts or, you know, put jams on in your earphones while you're running your equipment. Just be in the moment and make your cuts and be careful. I'm not gonna go into, uh, this is not a how to use a saw lesson. This is just the tools I use to build my instruments and be careful. Gonna get four pieces out of this and then one more off of another scrap and glue them all together for my body form. I used the chalk line and snapped all my lines. We'll square it up later. I just have a flat area on the ground. Get everything squared up as much as possible. And I, this still has a little bit left in it. And I, I'll just leave it with the lid on. That way for the next batch, I can get a little more glue out of it. I'll get another brick, put it down on there. A couple more. All right, that's squishing down pretty good. And I'll make sure everything's kind of squared up. Sit down for a minute while all this glue dries and spend some time working on guitar blueprints and I'm going to draw out my neck shape for the arch top on this on this hunk of wood based on the book.
So the rough cut of the neck, here it is. We'll get the plane and start flattening everything out. But I like this laminate stringer in here. This is gonna look nice. So here's the back, there's the top, and there's the neck. Line that up with the seam. I think eventually I'll make a pattern out of like a masonite and then I could just, whoosh, just draw it really fast. But for now, we're doing paper and Sharpie. So now we'll get in and refine the edges with files and sand it. And Dang, this is a big guitar. And we will file down the edges of this so it's the it's a good shape right down to my sharpie line here. Then I got the the four in hand, you know, with the round side for doing the curves, and I've got a rough a uh, round and flat rasp for getting into the into the curves. And just kind of work those through. This is going to be a scary part for me. This bending my sides to get to fit this. I haven't bent anything that tight before, so there will be a challenge. And then you can flip to the flat side to get the others. It's looking pretty good. Right in here, a little bit of a bump. And then the, the foreign hand has a smooth side for, for getting the rough edges off. And then you can feel the, the high parts as you go around. So between these two and this Japanese uh, rasp, great additions to the shop. And they weren't too expensive. You know, it'd be nice to have one of those, uh, those the thing with the drum that goes up and down. You know, it's got the sander and it and oscillates up and down. That'd be cool to have. Not yet. So that's, that's what I like about hand tools. It's kind of old school way. I like to read books about the old uh, makers, you know, like Stradivarius and then Ramirez and then there's a lot of guitar builders over the centuries you know they didn't have cnc machines and stuff so we can still do it I'm not in a big hurry. maybe a cnc would be cool to have in the future once you like nail down the design that you want to repeat and that people you know, because I do sell guitars once in a while on my reverb shop and, and at art fairs, art fairs and music festivals. And I've had lots, of, I've built lots of cigar box guitars and the consoles and the uh, strum sticks.
You know, I restored a dulcimer and that sold right away. And it's just approaching each instrument one at a time and it takes time. You can't be in a big hurry because at first I was in a hurry doing the cigar box guitars so I can have a lot of inventory to sell. But what t what happened was you end up making lots of mistakes. But sometimes you can't recover from and you just gotta scrap the project. So now I've learned to take my time a little more and I'm getting better results with, with nicer playing instruments. Yeah, and I, I like watching guitar building videos online, but lots of times it, it's uh, people that have been doing it for probably a lot longer than I have, and they throw it, they throw it in the planer, and they got the CNC. It's cool to watch, but then you go, man, I can't do that yet. What is it, what's up here that I can actually do with what I have on hand? So that's kind of it's my approach to guitar building. We celebrate old school makers from centuries ago and read about them and learn all about it. This Japanese rasp has, you know, a rough side and a smooth side, and this one can really take down material quickly, the rough side, and then you kind of polish it up with the smooth side. This is great for neck shaping too. feel along it and if you like there's a little bit of a bump right there Just look that. then you, you can fit feel the hills like knob right there. Let's move that out. Yeah, then you it starts becoming an even road with no hills or valleys. And that's we just work our way around. I'm gonna go ahead and put links to these files in the description because I'm starting to build my affiliate links to, to help the channel a little more. But you can, you know, you can find it. This is like at all the hardware stores and stuff. They're pretty easy to come by. This one's better. And this last little hump here. And leave that 
flat. Smooth out that transition. Just a little bit of a bump right there. Then I'll hit it with some leftover belt sander paper. It still has some life in it. And reduce the splinter risk. I got a nasty splinter last year. It, you know, got all swollen up. And then the, the doctor said, oh, just leave it, it'll come out. And it never really came out. I, and I use like the the splinter tweezers and it finally helped it come out. So I'm getting in the habit of really sanding down the edges so I don't get another giant splinter. Especially on this uh, reclaimed lumber. You know, it's not the tightest grain in the world. But it'll, it'll bite you. Yeah, I'll just kind of bevel the edges real quick. It reduces the risk of snagging a splinter. Feel like a guitar. We can do a quick check against the uh, the pattern. And I think I think that'll work. So I'm gonna use this. I actually need to plane this. Here's the back. So first I'm gonna plane this down a little bit because these stringers are sticking up. So I'll plane this down slightly, both sides to get it smooth. And then uh, I'll trace, trace the back, get it. Because the back is generally the same shape. The, just the contour of the carving is slightly different for the back compared to the top. Okay, so it was my number four plane and my 60.1 half that I got from Rock, Rockler.
These are bench dog planes. So one, one of my first, this is more than uncomfortable spending tools, but it was, uh, now it's worth it. Cause now that gets me a little closer. I'm going to cut out the shape and then I'll do the rest with like the belt sander, the hand belt sander, get them, get all the, uh, steam, sand it off. So some power tools in the game, power tools, some of them I already had from, you know, building backyard projects and stuff. And some we try to buy on sale and clearance at the different places. So this one, we want to make sure and mark the center so my stringers are going to be in the right spot. So I'll measure what the center is here, and then I'll line up this center line to the center of my back piece. Okay, I got the mark lined up. I'm going to go ahead and clamp that. Because I do that a lot. I'll get something lined up, it looks good. And then as I'm drawing my lines, uh, I'll lead on it and push it out of alignment. So I'm just going to clamp that down and it won't move. And just draw my line. Okay, now I got something to follow on the bandsaw. And while I'm at it, I'm going to get my mold plywood and trace that too. So let's put this aside, grab the mold plywood. Because this is part one in the book, like choosing your wood and making the mold and getting your plates ready. So I'll mark a center on the mold and then trace this out and then we cut it, we cut the mold in half and then cut out our shape. And then we'll have two halves that we can put together and then use for the building process of, you know, doing our sides and uh, getting our kerf lining and stuff going. I'll measure with the, you know, the the wooden yard stick, but I'm not going to draw straight lines because if you sight down a wooden yard stick, it'll be a little crooked. But inches and half inches and quarter inches are pretty accurate on the wooden ruler. And then I'll use a metal straight edge for the to draw my line. My center mark. I like wooden rulers for sign painting. There's a link above for my sign painting stuff. And that's it for now.
you know, we'll get a little bandsaw footage and put some uh, dreamy music behind it. So when we cut out, so when we cut out our back plate and our mold, then we'll get started on bending the sides. Well, we'll just follow what the book tells me. It's really more about getting the top and back plate carved first. That's kind of the biggest part of the job. And then we'll get into bending sides and shaping up the neck. So uh, we'll keep going. And that's it for this week. So here we go. Is he gonna play again? I can play as much as I can on this one. And what will I play? Oh, I got the key to the highway. Build it out and bound to go. All right. And we'll talk next week. We're going to build a arch. A. We're going to build an arch top acoustic guitar based on this book.